Do you remember, when I did this question here, I pointed out that there's actually this whatever to the zero term. It's hanging on the end, but we do not write it because it doesn't have an effect on the answer. Yeah? But it is there. Okay. Now, in the same way, on both of these questions here, there's actually a whole bunch of numbers I haven't written because they do not affect the answer. Here are the numbers I'm missing. Can you see here how these powers climb down from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, etc.? Do you remember that? Well, that's with this guy. That's attached to this guy. This guy also gets raised by powers, though. Instead of his powers decreasing, his powers increase. So, in fact, there's a 1 to the 0 hiding out here. And then there's a 1 to the 1. And a 1 squared and a 1 cubed. And you can see why I didn't write these, because they do not numerically affect the outcome. However, when you get to this one, it does. So, let's do this one step by step together. What am I going to write? Firstly, and this time I am going to do it all the way through because it's pretty straightforward. The coefficients I'm going to need are 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Yes? So have them in your head. The way it works is I'm going to do the binomial coefficient even when it doesn't affect the number. And then I'm going to work out what happens with each of these and how many of each of them I have. Okay? So let's do it this way. Um, I'm going to have how many 3 y's on the first term? I'm just going to have four of them, right? It just comes from there. So if there are four of them, that means accordingly there will be zero of them. Okay? I'll keep going. You'll see how the pattern goes. Eric, do you want to ask a question? Why are you doing it backwards? Okay. If you recall, when I had a look at this, right? Do you remember I said Pascal's triangle was symmetrical, right? So you can actually do this whichever way you like. However, I'm trying to save myself some work because I know in my final line, I want to have a look at the variables and place them in descending order. I can see this is not going to have a variable. Neither does this and neither does this. But here, it's going to be different. So here I will show you the order and how it will be affected. Okay? Is there another question? Yeah. Um, like 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 and all that kind of thing. I will show you, this guy will do Pascal's triangle for you, okay? We're not quite up to that step yet. For now, Pascal's triangle is the most efficient way, but I will show you how this does it, okay? So, patience here on part of All right, now, there's the first term. And no is a bit of a mouthful, and these two terms contribute nothing, but they're important so I can set up the pattern. There are three parts to every one of the terms. I'm done with the first one. Now I'll do the next one. What was the binomial co coefficient next? Uh, I'm only on the second term, so it's just four. Right? So four of this. Now here's the advantage of me writing this in a long form. Once I've got this set up, it's very easy to write the next one. I just follow the pattern. This thing is going to decrease in power. So I'm going to get only three of him. But the other guy, this guy, he increases in power. So I'm going to get 1. Do you notice, by the way, look at the powers. Look at the powers. Do you see 4 plus 0 is 4? 3 plus 1 is 4. You're going to get 4 every single time. What's the next binomial coefficient? 6. Okay, you're getting the hang of it now. This power decreases. This power increases. And then you go to the next term. Binomial coefficient. 1, 4, 6, 4. This power decreases. This power increases. And I'm finally at my last term. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. This power has decreased to be nothing. And then this power has increased so that if you wanted to, you can see this is where I could have started if I wanted and done the whole thing in reverse. Okay, do you see the way I did it? Just because this one's a bit tricky, let's actually go ahead and do this. Um, 3 to the 4 is 81. Uh, three times three times three is twenty-seven. Times four is okay. Can you calculate there? Uh, three to four, one hundred eight. Two hundred sixteen. Uh, and then you multiply again, which is two hundred sixteen. How many y's do I have? I've written it in descending order, like so. Uh, three squared is nine. Two squared is four. That's thirty-six. Six lots of thirty-six, I think, is two hundred and sixteen. Relax, if you do yeah. maths as much as I did, then you would know that too. Uh, is that right? Did I get it right? Yeah. Yep. 
Uh, next one. 3 times 8 is 24, times 4 is 96. Last one is just the 2 to the 4, isn't it? It's just the 2 to the 4. And I'm done. So, just double check, make sure you haven't missed any uh, terms. You can see I've got my powers. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. That checks out. So, why do you why do I have to times what? Why do I have to multiply these through? Well, if you like, you can just do this manually if you want. Like the way we did this one, the way we did this. Uh, you can do that manually if you like, or you can do it this way. The binomial theorem is that you can do it this way and get to those numbers straight away using Pascal's triangle without having to go through the legwork of, oh, oh my goodness, do you really want to do two plus three y times 2 plus 3y, times 2 plus, do you really, do you really? I mean, you can, but you will end up with this, okay? Now, do you remember on the first line, the first example I pointed out, one of the questions you'll get asked later on is, what's the greatest coefficient? Last time it was 240. What's the greatest coefficient here? 216. It's 216, and it happens twice, which is a little bit weird. This happens sometimes. You shouldn't be that surprised, because if you look back at regular old Pascal's triangle, Every second row, have a look at the terms, right in the middle. Do you notice every second row, you've got threes twice, then you get tens twice, then you get 35s twice. It's because there's an even number of terms in that row of Pascal's triangle. So sometimes you'll get a double up. 